What's going on? This Theo Greminger, aka the OG Fantasy, back at it with your waiver wire ads for week four. Must add players that can help any fantasy manager get through. Last week, right here on this video, I recommended Tank Dell as my number one waiver wire ad of the week. Tank Dell goes off five catches, 145 yards, and a touchdown. Had Jerome Ford as my top running back recommendation. Jerome Ford finds the end zone twice and had Luke Musgrave as my top tight end. Musgrave has season high in catches with six and led the Packers with eight targets. We're going to look to do it again this week right here in Player Profiler. And just a quick PSA, I'm recommending players that are almost all recommend that are almost all available in 75% of Yahoo leagues or more. Again, Almost every single player that I'm mentioning is available in 75% of Yahoo leagues or more. A couple of them might be available in a percent or or two less. And if they're a shallow league ad, I'm going to mention that. But let's get this one out of the way. If Devon A-Chain is available in your league, make it rain. This is a use all of your fab type situation. If your league allows for $0 waiver wire bids, or 0% waiver wire bids, then use every single dollar you have left to get, get Devon A-Chain. If your league requires $1 bids, use almost everything you have left on Devon A-Chain. Just make sure you have bi-week replacements lined up. And we've got to talk about bi-weeks. The ugly B word has showed up once again in fantasy, and we want to get a week ahead on buys. Week five, the Cleveland Browns, the LA Chargers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Seattle Seahawks are all on bye weeks. Week six, Green Bay and Pittsburgh are on bye weeks. Week seven, Carolina, Cincinnati, Dallas, Houston, the New York Jets, and the Tennessee Titans are all on bye weeks. It's week four. We want to prepare for those week five bye weeks right now. If you're starting Justin Herbert, if you're starting Keenan Allen, if you're starting Amari Cooper, if you're starting Deshaun Watson, if you've been using Mike Evans and getting great points from this terrific start he's had, if you've been using DK Metcalf, Kenneth Walker, Geno Smith, we want to be able to add options this week. You want to have a player already set so you don't have to spend too much fab or use a higher waiver wire priority next week just to cover your lineup. Get prepared for bye weeks. Let's start at the quarterback position. This player is available in 80% of Yahoo leagues, and that's C.J. Stroud. Stroud is my top quarterback recommendation for the week. I had him on this list last week, but I should have had him way higher in the top 10. He makes my top 10 overall waiver wire rankings this week. I think this is like the get-out-of-jail-free card for a couple of teams that maybe you invested in a Justin Fields. Maybe you're a little worried about Daniel Jones. Maybe you waited on QB and you're kind of being left to hang out to dry. C.J. Stroud can be a life raft for you. Much like Anthony Richardson, I think C.J. Stroud is going to be a top 12 quarterback this year. Stroud had 664 passing yards his past two games, four touchdowns, and the great thing about Stroud, he hasn't thrown a pick. He's had 77 pass attempts the last two weeks without a pick. Last summer, on Sonic Truth Pod with the pod father Matt Kelly and Alan Soslowski, I compared C.J. Stroud to Kirk Cousins. This early play from Stroud makes me think that maybe he's the next Joe Burrow. I love the way he looks. Houston's being aggressive, playing three wide sets all the time. Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and veteran Robert Woods give him three wide receiver options. And Stroud is just playing tremendous, tremendous football right now. Add C.J. Stroud if you need a quarterback option. Baker Mayfield struggled last night, but that Philadelphia Eagles defense is very tough. I think Mayfield is one we want to continue to, to monitor. He's got solid weapons in Chris Godwin and especially Mike Evans right now. Baker had a very strong week one and week two. Let's keep an eye on him in week four and see how he does after having a pretty bad game last night against Philadelphia. You have, if you're looking for a one-week streamer, Andy Dalton can get you through the week, especially Superflex managers. He was terrific, 361 passing yards. 
He had two touchdown passes, DJ Shark, Adam Thielen. Andy Dalton looked really good. If I need a streamer for the week, I'm going to Andy Dalton. If you miss on Dalton and you want a cheaper streamer, Minshew Magic now won two games in a row. Gardner Minshew uh, now faces off against the Rams, a little bit easier matchup uh, than he had last week against Baltimore. This is a low-end, get-you-through-the-week type recommendation. And the fun streaming option will be Jameis Winston in the revenge game against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is coming off of a short week. New Orleans has Rashid Shahid, Michael Thomas, and oh yeah, they have Chris Olave. And they get Alvin Kamara coming back. New Orleans might put up a number this week against Tampa Bay on a short week. Jameis Winston, every now and then, can go nuts in fantasy. Again, these last three quarterbacks I recommended, these are streaming options. These are not season-long uh, you know, pivots. This is, but if I need a quarterback this week, especially in Superflex, all three are options. Running backs, shallow league recommend. Kendra Miller is still available in 66% of Yahoo leagues. Did not go nuts this past week, but his usage was promising. First game in the NFL, he has nine carries for 34 yards. He also caught a pass. He is locked in RB2 behind Alvin Kamara. Kamara is going to be set for a really nice workload. But Kamara is getting a little bit older. If Kamara misses any time, Kendra Miller would be a guy that we're putting into our lineups. I also think he's going to have weeks where he's going to put up a usable number despite playing behind Kamara. Another shallow league ad available in 64% of Yahoo leagues is Justice Hill. Justice Hill missed this past week with a foot injury. Gus Edwards suffered a concussion. Probably going to miss this week. If Justice Hill comes back, I think Justice Hill leads the Baltimore backfield. Don't go overspending. Baltimore backfield, there's a bunch of other guys we're going to talk about, but Justice Hill would be my pick to lead Baltimore in touches if he's available from a foot injury. My favorite running back ad this week is Tajay Spears. Two out of three games, Tajay Spears has outsnapped Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is averaging 3.2 yards per carry through three games. Is Derrick Henry falling off? I think we're going to know really quickly, but the signs are not promising. Tajay Spears had four receptions this past Sunday in the loss to Cleveland. His usage is moving up, and Derrick Henry's play is moving down. Tennessee is at a crossroads. This is a one and two team. They need a spark. Tajay Spears getting more work could be a, a real boon to them. And even if we don't think he's going to have a weekly workload, there is a Derrick Henry. 30-year-old back, his play is regressing. If he misses time, Tajay Spears moves right in. Treat him as a very high-end handcuff that could cut out a weekly role. Think about like Jalen Warren last year or years in the past where Tony Pollard carved in a little bit of extra role when Zeke was starting to struggle. That's in the range of outcomes for Tajay Spears. I want him on every team I can. He's available in 76% of Yahoo Leagues. Jeff Wilson comes off the IR soon. We uh, saw the Miami mob last week. Mostert, A-Chain, those guys went nuts. But if either one of them misses some time, Jeff Wilson would get touches in the league's best offense. We want to load our benches with Miami Dolphins, especially in deep leagues. Jeff Wilson available in 75% of leagues. Shallow League ad, Matt Breida, available in 70% of Yahoo leagues. If Saquon Barkley misses another game, which he probably will, then Brita gets another start. Nothing exciting, but if you need a spot start and you want 10 points, Brita can give you that. Rico Dowdle, available in 97% of Yahoo leagues, had his best game as a pro, 46 combined yards, has a touchdown, catches three passes. He's a direct handcuff to Tony Pollard. Add him if you need a lottery ticket on your bench. Sean Tucker, handcuff in Tampa. Jaleel McLaughlin, out-carried Samaj P. Ron 5-3 this, this past week. Denver needs to get something going. And maybe getting Jaleel McLaughlin a few more touches might be a thing. Melvin Gordon, if Justice Hill doesn't go and Gus Edwards misses, Melvin Gordon could give you a spot start. So if you liked what you got from Matt Breida last week, that could be Melvin Gordon this week. He had uh, 55 yards combined in Baltimore's loss to Indianapolis. That was an overtime game. Don't go spending your money on Melvin Gordon, but if you can get him for a dollar, you might get a spot start out of it. The back I want to roster on Baltimore is Keaton Mitchell. 
This is a 43740 smaller back. He's only about 5'8, weighs less than 190 pounds, but Keaton Mitchell is explosive. I want to roster him because I think this Baltimore backfield is going to need an, an injection of youth and explosiveness. I think Keaton Mitchell could be a thing, and he's going to cost you nothing on the waiver wire. Trey Sermon. Oh, gross. Theo recommended Trey Sermon. I better log out of this video. Trey Sermon is sitting there in every single league. This was his first game in Indianapolis. He was outsnapped 64 to 18 by Zach Moss. Zach Moss is off to a tremendous start. Zach Moss right now might be an RB1 for uh, heading into week four, but Zach Moss has never had more than 125 touches in a season. Trey Sermon, his first game in Indianapolis, had more snaps, and Jake Funk was non-existent. So this is your handcuff running back in Indianapolis. This is a upper half of the league rushing attack. Trey Sermon is a handcuff running back. We think this season is goofy. Wait until Trey Sermon gets a start. You can add him for $0. Keaton Mitchell, Trey Sermon, add him for a zero. Thank me later if it works out. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't cost you anything. Let's get to wide receivers. Tank Dell, still available in 68% of Yahoo leagues. Tank Dell is a baller. Back-to-back weeks with a touchdown catch. This is the best third-round NFL draft pick wide receiver since Terry McLaurin and Deontay Johnson in 2019. Tank Dell is a stud. He's going to be a wide receiver three moving forward. If he's still available in your league, you want to be extremely aggressive. Not quite Devon A. Chain, 100% of your fab aggressive, but he is a 50 to 75% of your fab type addition. He's the best wide receiver addition in football this week. Another shallow league ad that you want to be very aggressive for won't cost you as much as Tank Dell is Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims is available in 73% of Yahoo leagues. Mims is electric. The Dolphins completely rolled the Broncos, but the issue was not Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims had his highest target total of the season with five. He caught three passes for 73 yards, but then he adds 121 yards on kick returns, including a touchdown. Mims is electric. The Denver Broncos need to get Marvin Mims more involved. I believe in the second half of the season, Marvin Mims is going to be in our starting lineups, whether that's as a wide receiver three, whether that's as a flex, I'm not sure. But rational coaching is Marvin Mims getting more touches. Shallow league ad. Quentin Johnston is actually uh, rostered in 32% of Yahoo leagues. Some drafters uh, got a little lucky with this one, and some drafters maybe didn't pay attention. Quentin Johnston's been kind of non-existent for the first three games of the season. but He's got a chance for a much larger role now that Mike Williams is done for the year. A lot of waiver wire uh, columns are recommending Josh Palmer as the number one waiver wire ad this week. We're going to get to him in a second. I prefer Tank Dell and Marvin Mims if you can get them. Uh, And Quentin Johnston, if he's available, I want to also try to go and get him. First round pick, TCU, big wide receiver, was very successful uh, on Yak at TCU. He had a touchdown catch in the preseason, looks the part and then has disappeared for the first three games. This is the entry Quentin Johnson needs. Mike Williams out for the year. Chargers are going to see what they have in Quentin Johnston. But Josh Palmer is available in 96% of Yahoo leagues. Josh Palmer last year had 72 uh, catches and 769 receiving yards. That's kind of the goal for what he will get this year. I think Josh Palmer is a very solid player. He's going to help your fantasy team. He's got a capped upside, but he could finish as a wide receiver three this year. I don't like him as much as getting a Tank Dell or a Marvin Mims, but I think you should be aggressive. Go and get yourself some Josh Palmer. If you have a Justin Herbert team, if you lost Mike Williams, prioritize getting Josh Palmer. Josh Downs, Indianapolis Colts. Another third round pick, just like Tank Dell. Josh Downs is really, really good. Josh Downs had 12 targets this past week. 12 targets for Josh Downs. He caught eight of them. He had 57 yards. He's a little bit low A dot slot receiver, but he's locked in in terms of getting targets right behind Michael Pittman. Josh Downs is your is your best bet to receive targets in the Indianapolis offense behind Michael Pittman in deeper leagues like NFFC. Josh Downs should be a huge priority this week. DJ Shark caught four passes, 86 yards and a touchdown. Caught a 47 yarder for uh, with, I mean. DJ Shark right out the gate looked really good. And the most uh, interesting thing about his performance was the fact that he goes 
double digit targets his first game back. And right now, Jonathan Mingo out this week, concussion. So it's going to be Adam Thielen and DJ Shark uh, getting a ton of looks against a Minnesota secondary that's been fried. You saw the Los Angeles, what Keenan Allen did against Minnesota. Neither DJ Shark or Adam Thielen is a Keenan Allen type player, but that Minnesota secondary is very generous. Both those guys can be used in the flex this week. Rashi Rice, I really like as an ad. He's available in 74% of Yahoo leagues. He had a season high seven targets, five catches, 59 yards, and he should have had a touchdown. It was overturned, but Rice, if he would have caught that touchdown, people would have been going nuts. Your league mates might not notice. Prioritize Rashi Rice. Jaden Reed, still available, 79% of Yahoo leagues. I talk about him every single week. This week, he had a 63-yard uh, receiving week. That's his season high. Last week, he had two touchdown catches. This is a day two pick. This is a second rounder for the Packers. He has a weekly role. I'm not sure how the targets are going to work out with Romeo Dubs and Jaden Reed when Christian Watson comes back. But I think there's an argument that the pie will grow larger and the Green Bay offense is getting better. Jordan Love is getting better. I want Jaden Reed on my bench. Shallow league ad. Jamison Williams comes off, off suspension. Uh, he'll be available in week seven. We've seen Josh Reynolds have a lot of early season success. Jamison Williams has a lot more to his game than Josh Reynolds. This is a dynamic, fast, wide receiver. And Detroit could use another playmaker with Sam Laporta and Amon Ross St. Brown. Or Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta is a baller, though. Excuse me to the Sun God fans out there for saying Laporta's name first. Michael Gallup, deep leagues, had his best game since 2021, caught six passes for 92 yards. If you're in a very, very deep league, Michael Gallup could help you out, even though the matchup against New England is difficult. Calvin Austin, deep league ad, available in 98% of Yahoo leagues. He had a 72-yard touchdown grab. Seems like his role is growing a little bit. Darius Slayton, available in 97% of Yahoo leagues. And available in 97% for a reason. Slayton and the Giants wide receivers have been pretty much invisible all season long. But Slayton has had five targets or more in three straight games. Seattle was shredded by Adam Thielen and DJ Shark last week. This could be a Darius Slayton game. If you're desperate, you want to throw a dart at somebody, it's Darius Slayton. Also want to talk about the pass-catching duo of Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson and Rondell Moore in Arizona. Michael Wilson, I want to stash. I want to see where things go. Season high, 86 receiving yards for the third round pick this past weekend in the win against Dallas. And Rondell Moore, there's something funny going on with Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore had three carries, finds the end zone, goes over 50 yards rushing. He also has four catches, extremely low ADOT catches, only like six yards on the four catches. But there's something going on in the usage for Rondell Moore. This could be something that Arizona really embraces. He's not a guy we're going to put in our lineup, but I want to see what's going on with Rondell Moore. He's got a running back type skill set. And if they're going to start to give him manufactured rushes, he could be a very interesting player on our bench. Tight end wise, Luke Musgrave. I've been begging you to add Luke Musgrave. Anybody who's a player profile or subscriber probably already has Luke Musgrave, but he's available in 82% of Yahoo leagues. This is a elite athlete. This is a second round draft pick. This is a player who had season high in catches with six, and he led Green Bay in targets with eight. He's on the field every single down, and he was missed down the seam by Jordan Love in like two games here. Luke Musgrave could have two smash games, led all tight ends in air yards in week one, had a really big week three. Get Luke Musgrave on your team. Even if you have a really good tight end, get Luke Musgrave on your team. You don't know how the situation is going to develop as the as year goes along. Kate Otten, not a whole lot there. Tampa Bay struggled last night, but Kate Otten's available in a lot of leagues. He never leaves the field. Keep an eye on the Washington pairing of Logan Thomas and Cole Turner. Thomas missed this past Sunday's game with a concussion, played well in the first two weeks of the season when he was on the field. Cole Turner led all Washington tight ends in targets, excuse me, all Washington receivers in targets this past week. He had four catches for 35 yards, especially FFPC managers. Keep an eye on these two guys. See which way Washington goes. Donald Parham, we're not going to pay up for touchdowns, but Donald Parham had two of them. Donald Parham was a near split with Gerald Everett on snaps. It was 38-34. If Parham can overtake Everett and start getting similar routes run, 
then Parham could be a fun player in the second half of the year. Parham is massive, like a six foot eight, uh, for, a former XFL guy. The red zone offense could look a little different for the Chargers with no Mike Williams. Parham could see an increased role. Again, don't pay for touchdowns, but throw in a dollar bid, throw in a zero bid if your league allows it. Get Parham. Let's see if the usage goes up this week. Deep, deep, deep league ad. FFPC managers. Julian Hill. I've talked about Durham Smythe. And I talked about Durham Smythe because he was on the field the whole the whole time for Miami in weeks one and two. Julian Hill overtook Durham Smythe. Hill played 57 snaps compared to only 21 for Smythe against Denver. And then routes run-wise, Julian Hill out, outran him 21 to 7 in terms of routes. Julian Hill is one that we want to monitor, especially in FFPC Dynasty Leagues, but also redraft leagues. This could be a dollar bid and a guy who could could see a growing role. Miami doesn't really use the tight end, so don't go overpaying for this one. But when an undrafted free agent starts overtaking a role like this in one of the league's best offenses, we have to pay attention. My overall top 10 ads, Tank Dell, number one, Adam if he's there. Devon A. Chain obviously would be number one, guys, but he's, he's two rostered. So let's go through this again. Tank Dell, number one. Marvin Mims, number two. Number three, Ty J. Spears. Number four, C.J. Stroud. Number five, Josh Palmer. Number six, DJ, DJ Shark. Number seven, Luke Musgrave. Number eight, Rasheed Rice. Number nine, Jaden Reed. Number 10, Jamison Williams. I'm assuming Quentin Johnson is rostered in your league. If he's available, put him right there with Shark and Palmer behind those two guys. Again, Tank Dell, Marvin Mims, Tajay Spears, CJ Stroud, Josh Palmer, that's my top five. Tune in next week for another drop of my waiver wire selections. Let's go crush it in week four. Let's have another big week here. And stick with us in the Road to Underworld. Got a lot of great shows coming out all week long.